Good evening, and welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Brockton City Council for November 27, 2023. A quorum being present, please rise and join me. Everyone has risen in, this, in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councillors, this evening, Ward 2, Councillor Maria Tavares is unable to join us, and um, Councillor at Large Rita Mendez is caught in Boston, unsure she will get here in time. Mr. Clerk. <laughs> Item number one, acceptance of the minutes of the November 13th, 2023 City Council meeting. Accepted and placed on file. We have appointments. We have the reappointment of Mr. Robert Graham of Brockton, Mass., to the Board of Directors of the Council on Aging, pursuant to the City of Brockton Ordinances, Section 2-414, for a term of three years. Referred to Finance. We have the reappointment of Stephen Hook of Brockton, Mass., to the Traffic Commission, pursuant to City of Brockton Ordinance, Section 466, for a term of three years. Referred to Finance. We have hearings. Petition of 693 North Montello, LLC, Manuel D. Pires of 192 Braymore Road, Brockton, Mass., for a motor vehicle repair mechanical license and motor vehicle repair body license transfer located at 693 North, North Montello Street, Brockton, Mass., in City Clerk's Office, March 30, 2022. Hearing assigned for November 27, 2023. Fire Department has no objections. All paperwork is on file. The time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? If so, please come forward, give your name and address to the clerk. My name is Manny D. Pires uh, from 192 Braymore Road, Brockton. Good evening, Mr. Pires. Thank Good you. to Good see day. you. Do you have a statement for the city council? Uh, not at all. I would say, like, you know, I just wanted to, you know, just make sure that, you know, in, on behalf of Pires Brothers, I'm one of the brothers. We're gonna comply with all the city's ordinances and laws, regulations. So yeah, we're doing okay. We're doing well. Right. Thank you, um, councilors. Okay. Is there anyone else here in favor of this of this license transfer? If so, please come forward. Give your name and address to the clerk. Okay. Um, if not, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here in opposition to this transfer of a license? Okay. If not, then I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Councilors, does anyone have any? Councilor Lally. Madam President, uh, I just wanted to say that I have spoken with Mr. Pires um, and I've spoken with the owner, uh, the, the prior owner. Uh, this, uh, the, the Pyres brothers have been in operation here for uh, a while now. Uh, the property has been upkept. Uh, you know, things are, are running very smoothly. I've received no complaints from any of the neighbors, um, and they've, they've gotten uh, praise for their, uh, their practice uh, and their performance. So I will not be making any, uh, any adjustment to any stipulations, and I would ask my colleagues to support uh, this license at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Motion to recommend favorably. Well, the question comes on granting the license. Okay. Motion by to grant. Vote. Thank you. I'm, st I'm still thinking that we're in FinCom, you see. That's all right. That's okay. <laughs> so we're going to take a hand vote. All in favor. Anyone opposed? Thank you. It carries. Thank you, Mr. Paris. You all, thank you very much. Yeah. Item number five, we have the petition of Warren Avenue Mobile, LLC, Nadim Sitar of 1 Eric Drive, Lincoln, Rhode Island, for a garage license transfer located at 761 Warren Ave, Brockton, Mass., in City Clerk's Office, October 13th, 2023, hearing assigned for November 27th, 2023. Fire Department has no objections. All paperwork is on file. The time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? If so, come forward, give your name and address to the clerk. Hi, my name is Nadim, good evening. Uh, name is Nadim Sattar in uh, One Eroka Drive, Lincoln, Rhode Island, and I'm here for 761 Warren Ave, uh, Brockton, Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah. And sir, do you have any statement for the city council at this time? Oh, this is our fourth business, and uh, it, you know, we gonna turn into a shell. It'd be a very good add-on for this side of the city. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone else here in favor? If so, please come forward. Give us your name and address. 
All right. If not, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here in opposition? Come forward. Give us your name and address. All right. I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Council Giagostino. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I spoke with Mr. Sattar um, uh, for a few minutes, and um, you know he's uh, owned several similar operations, some of them in the city. Um, I'm comfortable that he knows um, how to properly run this type of business, and uh, I think he, I wish him much success. Um, there is a uh, zoning um, restriction on the um, um, on the property. Um, I have gone over that with him. Um, he's aware of it, understands it, so I'm comfortable that, um, you know, I'm comfortable with that. Um, I'm comfortable with this transfer, and uh, I'm going to ask my colleagues to uh, join me in supporting this transfer. Um, and uh, additionally, he did share that there's going to be some, uh, an investment of some kind in the property, and so I think that, uh, you know, they're going to make this into a nice business in, in Ward 3, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for them, and I wish them well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, don't leave yet. We haven't voted. I just wanted to say your, prop, your business will be located in Ward 3, which is why Councilor Giagostino spoke. Right across the street is Ward 4, which I represent. Okay. And in the past couple of years, I've had calls from, from residents who live across the street or nearby about the hours of operation not being observed, about the lights being on very late and all this. And so I bring that to your attention. Let's not let that happen in the future. Okay? I will try to, you know, focus okay. sometimes. You know, employees can go a little here and there. Sure. But we'll focus on what the times are. We follow the city rules. I, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. So the question comes on granting this license by a hand vote. Did you want to speak, Councillor Rodriguez? Uh, yes, ma'am, I do. Um, I know it's in Ward 3 and abuts Ward 4, but most importantly, it abuts my in-laws. Oh. <laughs> and Probably. I want to make sure that at least we're on record. Yes, we did have some problems with the, with the previous owners of that property. So I'm just going to, uh, the same thing that the council president just brought up is the fact that they're elderly and they're your neighbors in the sense. Uh, they're folks in their 80s now. So just to keep that in mind that uh, there will be calls uh, if those uh, situ if that situation occurs again. So please uh, do what you can to help us in terms of minimizing those issues. Uh, I am for this transfer. I'm not against your transfer, but I just wanted to make sure that it's stated here that we did have some problems in the past with that property. So we want to make sure that there's no repeat of those issues that we've had in the past and uh, that you do what you can to make sure that those neighbors are taken care of as well as far as just the noise level and the, the lighting and things like that on the property. I just want to bring it to because we already have one shell on East Ashland and we've been in the city for 12 years, never have an issue with any neighbors. We follow, we work with a good franchise, we follow all the rules and hopefully they won't have any problem. Yeah, it's just that their bedroom actually abuts your property, okay. you know. So if there's a lot of banging at odd hours of, of the night and stuff like that, you know, it could be bothersome to no, seniors we, we, in the we seniors' We will put all population. the signs, make sure the noise level goes down. And uh, believe me, when shell comes, they, it's going to be good add-on. Yeah, it's, we follow know, the laws. Believe you me. know how it is. Their, their son-in-law is a city councilor in the city, and I can't even hide the fact that I've, I could you know, pass it on to one of my ward guys. When you're the at-large, you know, you got to bring that up. And it's not because they're my in-laws, but it's just something that Anybody. would make sense that if a, a, a business is abutting a residence that, you know, we do observe some sort of uh, uh, caution when we're dealing with, uh, you know, noise and certain other uh, disturbances to our uh, citizens in this city. No Thank problem. You. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you. So again, the question comes on granting the license by a hand vote. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Thank you, it carries. Stay there, Mr. Sattar. Item number six, we have the petition of Warren Avenue Mobile, LLC, Nateem Sattar, 1 Eric Drive, Lincoln, Rhode Island, for flammable storage underground license transfer, located at 761 Warren Ave, Rockton, Mass. Excuse me. In City Clerk's Office, October 13th, 2023. Hearing assigned for November 27th, 2023. Fire, fire Department has no objections. All paperwork is on file. 
time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? Please state your name and address for the clerk. Uh, my name is Nadeem Sattar, and I'm here for 761 Warren Ave, Procton, Mass. Thank you. That's great. Is there a, an, a statement? Now, this is the license for the gas tanks. Correct. Right. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? We're just going to follow all the laws and storage, uh, even though she has the test done. But yes. since we're taking over, I ordered another test to make sure you know we comply with the state. Good. Uh, Can't hurt. Exactly. That's, that's right. Okay. Well, is there anyone else here who would like to be heard in favor of this license transfer? If not, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Can you tell I'm enjoying this? <laughs> <laughs> A little too much. So at this time, I ask, is there anyone here in opposition to this transfer? All right. If not, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Councilor Giagostino. Thank you, Madam President. Got to enjoy that while you still have it for that's another right. month. That's right. The days are numbered. <laughs> um, so again, as per my previous comments, I, I, I will just say that um, I support this license transfer. Um, it's just like I supported the, the previous transfer for this gentleman, and uh, I'll ask my colleagues to join me in um, voting in favor of granting this, this transfer. Thank you. Okay. And I've already said my piece about people being allowed to pump gas beyond 9 p.m., which is what the zoning variance requires. And you'll, you'll look into that and make sure that doesn't continue happening. Oh, right? We will train our employees, make sure, you know, 845, they start getting prepared. Uh, I mean, whatever need to be get done, I mean, 9 o'clock, you know, they try to shut down. Thank you. Just to be respectful of the neighbors. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, the question comes on granting the license by a hand vote. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Thank you. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number seven, we have the petition of National Grid and Verizon New England, Inc. to install one J.O. pole on Crescent Street beginning at a point approximately 90 feet east of the center line of the intersection of Christos Way. Install 50-foot class H1 pole between P77 and P79 Crescent Street. The pole will be located on city property, <coughs> excuse me, on the south side of Crescent Street. The pole will be labeled 78. In city clerk's office, October 10th, 2023. Hearing is signed for November 27th, 2023. All paperwork is on file. The time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. And sir, you're here. Please state your name and address for the, the clerk. My name is Dan Roach. Uh, I live at 27 Pine Tree Drive in Hanover. Um, I'm representing National Grid uh, this evening. Um, as stated, we'd like to um, add a pole, a mid-span pole between pole 70, uh, 7 and 79. So this would be labeled 78. And this is part of the grid's modernization and, you know, uh, driving robustness for uh, the green energy future. So what we're proposing to put on this pole is a recloser, and it's an automated recloser. So today, when there's a fault, uh, if a branch hits a tree, for instance, uh, the power goes out. We literally have to dispatch crews, and we're looking at lines, and we're trying to figure out where the issue is. This recloser will be a three-phase recloser, and will be automated such with a communication unit would send that data immediately to the grid. So the idea here is National Grid will be able to respond much quicker than we usually do. Um, so it's, it's reliability, but it's also fault isolation and resiliency for the grid. I have a question. Sure. Um, you said that this is going to be pool 78 between 77 and 79. Is there no 78 now? There isn't a 78 now, no. Why? Um, they could have been one at one time. Some, it's, sometimes they leave numbers uh, left for future use. Uh, a lot of times they'll suffix them if they were. So if this was a 70, it might be a 77-1. Um, so the policy is if we don't have that number, we use it. Mm. Otherwise, we'll suffix it. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who wishes to be heard about this in favor? If not, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here who wishes to be heard in opposition? <coughs> Not, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Councilor Thompson. Uh, thank you, Madam President. So, uh, just uh, one clarification. It, it says to install one JO pole, and then further down it says install a 50 foot class H1 pole. Are you installing one or two poles? Uh, it's a single pole. So, joint ownership just means that uh, when we put it in, Verizon will have rights. Today, they have some lines that run between the two poles. 
I believe they'll just stake them to the pole in the middle now for extra, you know, to make them more secure. Um, but it's only one pole, and that just details the pole. It's a, you know, 50, a 50 foot pole. Uh, it's, a, it's a heavy, a little heavier pole because of the weight of this unit that we're putting on. Okay, and, and will this require any impediment to traffic? Will you have to shut down the area or? Um, I didn't look at it that uh, closely, but it's part of our mitigation strategy that it, when we go to execute that, we actually bring out the operations crew, we look at it, and at that point, if uh, we agree, we'll, we could have one officer or two. Uh, we always use cones. We're always using you know, uh, some of the other safety measures around to let residents know that you know, we're doing work in the area. But certainly, if we need a detail, we'll certainly grab one. There's no, no question on that. It Okay, um, I appreciate that. Uh, what about the expected time frame of installation? Um, it, it would take probably four hours by the time we actually put the pole in, attach the wire, put the units on it. So my guess would be about four hours. Uh, I mean, meaning scheduling. Uh, when, when do we expect that pole to be installed? Uh, well, once we get this approved, the design is done. It, ro it rolls to our operations team, and they'll schedule it. But being that you know, right here in East Ashland, my guess would be within a week we would be doing the work. Okay. Um, I was just hoping that maybe you, and I'll, I'll give you my information and, uh, after I do represent the area. Okay. Just, yeah, um, this is right on Route 28, and, um, you know, it's a heavily trafficked area, just so that maybe I can give people a heads up that, um, you know, that, that there will be a slowdown or, um, you know, some impediment to traffic on that day, just to give them a heads up. No, that would be great. If I, if I get that information, I can relay that to the operations team, and we can definitely let you know. Perfect. I appreciate that. Thank you, Madam President. You're welcome. Anyone else have questions? Mm -hmm. All right, then the question comes on granting this by a hand vote. All in favor, counselors? <clears throat> Anyone opposed? Thank you, it carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item number eight, we have the petition of Westgate AP Investment, LLC, DBA Westgate Lanes of 13 Willow Street, Lowell, Mass, for a billiard, pool tables, and bowling alleys license transfer located at 65 Westgate Drive, Brockton, Mass. In City Clerk's Office, October 13th, 2023. Hearing assigned for November 13th, 2023. All paperwork is on file. The time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? If so, please come forward. State your name and address for the clerk. Hi, my name is Francine Kaiser. Uh, I reside at 235 Field Street here in Brockton. <laughs> Christopher Deck at uh, 6 Homestead Road in Pelham, New Hampshire. Thank you. So I'm currently the manager and have been the manager of Westgate Lane since the previous owners that I came before you guys with uh, about six years ago. Uh, they have made the decision as Westgate became, um, after the pandemic and stuff, it, it was tough. It was tough to keep an operation. It was tough for him being five hours away um, to keep things rolling. So uh, Chris Deck and his team, um, it, which would be Merched Salam and Kashem, uh, they both, Kashem lives in New York City. Salam is from New Hampshire as well as Chris. They have purchased Westgate, uh, but they have some great ideas. I am staying on with them for at least a year, even though I want to go home to New York. Uh, I will stay on with them and help them out and get things running. Uh, we are going before license commission next month on the 21st for some changes that they want to do. Um, like we saw license commission to add things to the premise. They want to add more. So it just basically they want to improve Westgate the best that they can. That's great. Um, okay, let's continue the hearing. Is there anyone here in favor of this transfer? If so, come forward. Seeing no one. Declare that portion closed. Is there anyone here in opposition to this transfer? Seeing none, we we'll declare that portion closed. Councilor Azak. Thank you, um, Madam President. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Chris Deck and his team, as well as Francine, for really investing in Brockton. Uh, Westgate Lanes is, is an asset, and I'll never forget um, when I was running my first election 11 years ago, and everybody kept saying, we don't have anywhere for our kids to go, there's nothing to do in Brockton. Yes, we do have somewhere for our kids to go, and that's Westgate Lanes. There's bowling, there's arcades, there's party rooms, um, there's, there's billiards, there's uh, pool tables, but you know, I've heard your plans of what you want to expand and what you want to turn it into, and I'm really excited for Brockton. So I wanted to make sure that I thank you um, personally. And um, 
you know, I want you to know that we're here for you. This is just a transfer. The business, Francine has done an amazing job being uh, here in Brockton. She's a Brockton <laughs> resident, even I, though she's really. <laughs> <laughs> um, what six, Councilor Lally. Um, but, you know, she's done a, she's done a great job really um, keep, you know, communicating between the city and the business, um, really doing her best because it was tough times. Uh, that, you know, the, we're dealing with a lot and she's done a really great job. So I want to thank you, um, Francine. So counselors, this is a great business. Um, the, the pub is amazing. You know, there's a secret recipe to their marinara sauce. I don't, the chef there, they do have really, you know, they really have upscale and I, I know you have great plans. So I hope you'll vote favorably for this. And, um, and I look forward to um, your plans of what you want to turn this into. But thank you again for investing in Brockton. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, then. Uh, question comes on granting by hand vote. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Thank you. It carries. Best of Thank luck, you. Francine, and sir, to you as well. Thank you very much. Great business. Thank you. Item number nine. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have the report of the Real Estate Committee for its meeting of November 14th, 2023. Accepted and placed on file. We have the report of the Ordinance Committee for its meeting of November 16th, 2023. Accepted and placed on file. We have the report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of November, November 20, 2023. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Mayor reappointing Mr. Robert Graham of Brockton, Mass. to the Board of Directors of the Brockton Council on Aging, pursuant to the City of Brockton Ordinances, Section 2-414, for a term of three years. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor reappointing Stephen Hook of Brockton, Mass. to the Traffic Commission, pursuant to City of Brockton Ordinance, Section 466, for a term of three years. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Mayor appointing Chris Lane Bonney as temporary election commissioner to fill the current vacancy. This appointment shall take effect on November 17th, 2023 and terminate upon the formal appointment of an election commissioner pursuant to section 16A of Mass General Laws, chapter 51. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the DPW com com Commissioner requesting that the City Council allow them to use monies from fiscal year 24 to fund unpaid and unencumbered Veolia invoices as listed below. Please be aware that this request is due to a shortfall in funding the fiscal year 23 budget. To Viola, $213,560.97. To Veolia, $238,820.35. To Veolia, $483,275.99. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the DPW Commissioner requesting that the City Council allow them to use $530,872.99 from existing fiscal year 24 monies to fund unpaid unencumbered invoices from fiscal year 23 as itemized in the in a order later this evening. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communica uh, communication from the Chief of Police requesting authorization to expend grant monies related to the fiscal year 24 Municipal Road Safety Program of $60,000 from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the BPD grant writer relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor in accordance with the general laws of Massachusetts chapter 44, recommending the rescinding order 1260 tax increment financing agreement, TIF, between the city and Air Energy Group LLC. After reviewing the TIF with the Commonwealth, some adjustments were requested. The best way to proceed is to rescind the existing agreement and approve a new one. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor in accordance with the general laws of Massachusetts, Chapter 44, recommending the City Council authorize and approve the tax increment financing agreement between the City and Air Energy Group, LLC. This agreement will contribute to the ongoing economic vitality of the City and will commit to job creation and increased revenue. 
Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Unfinished business. We have an ordinance be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton to adopt a new section to Chapter 12, Section 6, Pedestrians of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton as follows. 12-154.1, Purpose. Every pedestrian shall have the right to use the public ways in the City of Brockton, except where pedestrian travel is expressly or specifically prohibited by law, regulation, signage, road closure, or other safety or emergency factors. Excuse me. Notwithstanding the right of pedestrians to use public ways within the City of Brockton, the City of Brockton has experienced an increase in public safety issues relating to pedestrian use of and entry into the public roadways identified herein, for which a significant public safety need has arisen requiring implementation of this median safety and pedestrian regulation ordinance. 12-154.2, road subject to the provision of this ordinance. This ordinance shall apply to the following roadways within the City of Brockton. Main Street, North Main Street, Warren Ave, North Warren Ave, Montello Street, North Montello Street, Belmont Street, Pleasant Street, Center Street, Crescent Street, Oak Street, Pearl Street, North Pearl Street, Reynolds Memorial Highway, East Ashland Street, Spring Street, West Chestnut Street, School Street, Court Street, Forest Ave, Richmond Street, Battle Street, and North Quincy Street. 12-154.3, exemptions. 12-154.3.1, nothing in this ordinance shall prohib prohibit law enforcement officials and public safety officials from enforcement of statutory, regulatory, and local regulations and requirements pertaining to use of public ways by pedestrians, travelers, and motor vehicle operators within the city. 12-154.3.2, these regulations shall not apply to municipal, state, federal or other public service corporation individuals or their agents, servants and employees while in the performance of their public duties, including, including duties involving public safety, construction, maintenance, repair or cleaning work. 12-154.3.3, these regulations shall not, ap not apply to road closures for special events as deemed necessary by municipal, state, federal or other public service corporation individuals or their agents, servants, and employees. 12-154.3.4, these regulations do not apply to pedestrians entering into a roadway for purposes of acting in emergency circumstances. 12-154.4, definitions. Crosswalk, the specially paved and marked path for pedestrian crossing on a roadway. Median, a section or reserved area separating opposing lanes of traffic on a roadway traffic between lanes on a roadway. Center traffic island slash safety island, an area provided for safety of pedestrians from vehicular traffic. Sidewalk, a paved walkway along the side of a roadway. Shoulder, the area or strip of land immediately adjacent to a traffic lane of roadway which does not contain a sidewalk. Roadway, shall refer to the roadways identified in section 12-154.2. 12-154.5, regulations. 12-154.5.1, it shall be unlawful for any pedestrian, <coughs> excuse me, to walk along and upon an adjacent roadway whenever a sidewalk, median, crosswalk, center traffic island, or safety island is avail available for pedestrian use. 12-154.5.2, it shall be unlawful for any pedestrian to leave an available sidewalk median, crosswalk, center traffic island, or safety island, and enter the pathway of any motor vehicle on a roadway. 12-154.5.3, where sidewalks, median crosswalks, center traffic islands, or safety islands are unavailable, a pedestrian shall use an unfinished shoulder of a roadway and avoid traveling or entering into the roadway. 12-154.5.4, a pedestrian shall not enter a public way into the pathway of motor vehicles traveling on and along the roadway or approach within five feet of a motor vehicle or vehicles using a roadway. 12-154.6, 12-154.6.1, excuse me, enforcement. These median safety and pedestrian regulations shall be enforced by the City of Brockton Police Department. 12-154.6.2, any individual who violates the provisions of this ordinance shall be cited and fined as follows. 
a fine not exceeding $50 for a first offence, $100 for a second offence, and $300 for a third and each subsequent offence thereafter, with each separate instance considered a distinct violation, subjecting the violator to citations and fines. In City Council, September 25th, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable as amended. Councillors, the question is on passage to a third reading as amended by a hand vote. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Thank you, it carries. Item number 30, ordinance, be it ordained by the... Not yet. Oh. No. It's on, on the agenda. Okay. Uh, I would like to move that we waive the complete reading of item number 31. Again, this is just being passed to a third reading. However, there is a typo, and it's on, uh, it's in the paragraph that begins, a permit shall be prominently displayed and visible, and I believe it should say for inspectional personnel, not for inspection personnel. And I would, I would just uh, move that we make that, correct that Scrivener's error. So just a motion to insert inspectional personnel where it says inspection personnel. Second. Councillor, we That will be a scrivener's error that we can correct without a vote. Okay, we I don't need a vote. That. Okay. Uh, however, the, the, he is incorrect in one part. This is for final passage. This has already had its second reading. Okay, so we have to read it. We, okay. I, I thank you, Mr. Clerk. Will uh, you would be, withdraw would, your motion? I, I withdraw the motion. I, I thought we went over this uh, just recently in ordinance, but maybe I'm mistaken. Would you like me to answer that? Yes. Uh, Council, that is true, but it has already been here for a second reading. It got referred back, so it's already had its two readings here. Uh, as amended. So this is, for, uh, this is as amended for final passage. All right, thank you. This evening. Item number 30, ordinance, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton, Article 3, General Regulations and Permitted Modifications of the City's Zoning Ordinances is hereby amended by inserting the following section where appropriate. Portable storage containers. Section 1, definitions. Portable storage container means a portable, weather-resistant receptacle designed and used for the storage or shipment of personal property, building material, or merchandise. The term shall not include yard waste containers nor construction debris containers. Port portable storage containers shall not include storage trailers registered with the Registry of Motor Vehicles. Section 2, restrictions. No storage container shall be stored or parked on a premise without a permit from the Inspectional Services Department. The permitting and use shall be the subject to the following requirements and re restrictions. Item number one, residential zones. The permit shall not allow for more than one storage container or bulk transportation devices on the premises. A permit for more than one storage container shall be subject to the discretion of the Commissioner of Buildings. B, the permit shall be for an, an initial period of 45 days. C, the permit may only be extended one time for an additional period not, not to exceed 30 days. Only one permit may be issued during a 12-month period commencing at the date of the original permit. Item D, placement of storage containers must comply with all accessory setback requirements for rear and side setbacks and must comply with all front setbacks for a primary structure in the subject residential zone and not be situated further forward than the plane of the house. The Commissioner of Buildings may allow in his or her discretion for a portable storage container to be situated as directed by the Commissioner of Buildings if compliance with these standards cannot be met. E, no portable storage container shall have a length greater than 20 feet or a width greater than 9 feet or a height greater than 9 feet. Item 2, commercial and industrial zones. The permit shall not allow for more than five storage containers on the premises. A separate permit may allow for the number of storage containers on the premises to exceed five. However, site plan approval is required prior to the issuance of the permit. Item C, the permit shall be for an initial period of one year. The permit may be renewed each subsequent year. D, the storage containers shall not be connected. There shall be a minimum of 10 feet between each unit. E, the storage containers shall not be located upon designated parking spaces. F, placement of storage containers on the premises must be screened from view and not be situated further forward than the plane of the primary structure. 
the Commissioner of Buildings may allow in his or her discretion for a portable storage container to be situated as directed by the Commissioner of Buildings if compliance with these standards cannot be met. A permit shall be prominently displayed and visible for inspectional personnel and the permit shall contain the ex expiration date of the permit. Inspectional Services Department shall provide a list of prohibited materials not to be stored in the portable storage container, which shall include prohibiting storage of live animals, hazardous materials, and combustible material, and shall further prohibit habitation in the portable storage container. Inspectional Services Department shall have the right to inspect the portable storage containers for compliance with the permit and, the, and this ordinance. Construction sites shall be exempt from the requirements of this ordinance. The issuance and extension of any permit shall be within the discretion of the Inspectional Services Department. The Inspectional Services Department shall affix fees for the initial permit and permit extension and permit extension and shall assign a per unit fee for commercial and industrial zones. The Commissioner of Buildings shall file a fee schedule with the City Council annually. There shall be a penalty of $200 for any violation of this ordinance. Each day shall constitute a separate offense. This was favorable as further amended. In City Council, April 24th, 2023, Redden referred to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable as amended. In City Council, August 28th, 2023, passed to a third reading as amended. In City Council, September 11th, 2023, referred back to the Ordinance Committee. That report was favorable as further amended. Councilors, before we go to vote on this, I'm going to ask Attorney Resnick to speak to us about the further amendments to it. Um, so the amendments that were just um, amended in the ordinance committee last week was a reduction for the permit to be for one storage container instead of three. Um, one more could be more could be allowed, but that would be subject to the discretion of the commissioner of buildings. Um, the initial period was reduced from 90 days to 45 days, um, and a, there was a limitation put on so that only one permit could issue for a 12-month period, which would commence at the date of the original permit. There was also um, language to tighten up where these could be located um, and that it would not be situated any further than the front plane of the house. Um, and that the building commissioner could deviate from these if, if it was required because of the layout or situation for the property. Um, and that was also language that was carried over for the uh, commercial context as well. There was a requirement that the permit be displayed on the unit um, and then also language about what could be stored and what could not be stored in the unit. Um, and there was an exemption granted for construction sites, and it also allows for the Inspectional Service Department um, to be able to um, inspect the containers for compliance. Thank you. The question is on ordination as further amended by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Jagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Texera? Yes. <coughs> yes. Nine in the affirmative. The ordinance is ordained as further amendment amended. Item 31, we have the reappointment of David Andrews of Clifton Ave, Brockton, Mass, to the Council on Aging as a member for a three-year term ending October 2026. In City Council, October 23, 2023, Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on confirmation by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Giagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The appointment is confirmed. Order that the City Council authorizes the acceptance and expenditure of a donation in the amount of $5,000 from Hawkeye Fence to the Department of Public Works Highway Division. The donation will be used to build a fence around the marvelous Marvin Hagler statue. In City Council, November 13th, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Giagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. 
Item 33, order that the City Council authorizes the acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of $80,000 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection Fiscal Year 23 Mass DEP Fiscal Year 24 IDP grant to the Department of Public Works Refuse Division Fiscal Year 24 Mass DEP Fiscal Year 24 IDP grant fund. This grant will be used on outreach and education materials to address curbside recycling contamination issues. Purchase lease additional security cameras to monitor dumping on public property. Purchase segregated storage container for storing fire damaged rechargeable batteries received from Brockton Fire Department at the recycle depot until they are approved for shipping to a facility. Repair or replace paint swap shed at recycle depot and purchase equipment for kitchen scrap composting for sale to interested res residents at a sub subsidized rate. In City Council November 13th, 2023, Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Giagostino? Yes. Barwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item 34 ordered that the City Council authorizes the acceptance and expenditures of the total grant funds in the amount of $17,196,926.76 from Plymouth County to Unappropriated Estimated Receipts American Rescue Plan Act ARPA Fund. In City Council November 13, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Giagostino? Yes. Barwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item 35, ordered, whereas on March 27, 2023, the City of Brockton has entered into a tax increment ex exception tie agreement with 380 Quincy Street LLC for property located at 380 Quincy Street, and whereas paragraph D assignment of section six miscellaneous prohibits the assignment or transfer of the tie agreement without the written consent of the municip municipality, which approval shall not be unreasonably with withheld, and whereas 380 Quincy Street LLC has agreed to sell their interest in the subject property to Quincy Street LLC, and whereas 380 Quincy Street LLC has petitioned the City of Brockton to consent to the assignment of the tie agreement to Quincy Street LLC. Now therefore be it ordered by the City Council that the City of Brockton grants its consent to the assignment of the tie agreement to Quincy Street LLC. In City Council, November 13th, 2023, Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Giagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item 36. In accordance with the General Laws of Massachusetts, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council approve the expenditure of $14,179.36 from Traffic Commission Purchase of Services Engineering, $5,670, to CDM Smith, $5,670, from Traffic Commission Purchase of Services Public Safety, $2,059.64, to City of Brockton Tax Collectors, $2,059.64. From Traffic Commission Goods and Services, Traffic Lines and Signs, $6,449.72. To K5 Corporation, $6,449.72. In City Council, November 13th, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Giagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item 37, <clears throat> resolve to have Natalie Jean, the Executive Director of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, appear before the Finance Committee of the Brockton City Council to introduce herself and update the City Council on the BRA and the executive director's plans moving forward. In City Council, October 23, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. 
The question is on adoption by a hand vote. All in favor? Anyone opposed? The resolve is adopted. Item 38, resolved, whereas a community needs assessment was conducted by the UMass Boston Gerontology Institute, focusing on the city of Brockton and its senior populations. Now, therefore, be it resolved, Mrs. Janice Fitzgerald, Director of the Council on, on Aging, and a representative from UMass Boston be invited to the second Finance Committee meeting in November to present results and comments of importance relating to the needs assessment survey. In City Council, October 23, 2023, Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a hand vote. All in favor? Anyone opposed? The resolve is adopted. Orders. Item 39. Ordered in accordance with the General Laws of Massachusetts, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council approve the expenditure of $935,657.31 from DPW Sewer Division and other contracted services fiscal year 24 to Veolia, $213,560.97, $238,820.35, $483,275.99, in order to cover unanticipated expenses for the remainder of the fiscal year. Referred to finance. Ordered in accordance with the general laws of Massachusetts, <coughs> Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council approve the expenditure of $530,872.99 from DPW Water Division, purchase of services fiscal year 24, $530,152.78 uh, excuse me, that's from DPW Water Division Goods and Supplies, fiscal year 24, $720.21. Two, Brockton Police Department, $5,713.38. Abington Police Department, $825. Plymouth County Sheriff, $440. East Bridgewater Police Department, $440. Town of Holbrook Police Department, $1,276. Plimpton Police Department, $2,186.60. Advantage Truck Rainham LLC, $1,540.15. Burke, Dennis K. Inc., uh, $920.74. Uh, excuse me, that's $66.86. $66. United Construction and Forestry LLC, $920.74. Woodward's Auto Spring Shop, $22.39. Zep, $720.71. Constellation, $248,817.85. Bertarelli Brothers, $2,520. Veolia, $251,153.54. Modern Auto Body, $7,142.88. TL Edwards, Inc., $6,486.39. Referred to finance. Item 41, ordered that the City Council authorizes the acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of $60,000 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, $60,000, to the Police Department Fiscal Year 24 Municipal Road Safety Program, $60,000. Referred to finance. Now, item 42, ordered that the City Council hereby rescinds the tax increment financing agreement, TIF, between the City and Air Energy Group, LLC, Approved October 24th, 2023. Referred to finance. Item 43, ordered that the City Council authorizes and approves the tax increment financing agreement between the City and Air Energy Group, LLC. This agreement will contribute to the ongoing economic vitality of the City and will commit to job creation and increased revenue. Referred to finance. Um, late Madam file, President, Councilor Farwell. Uh, motion to admit a late file. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded to admit a late file. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Thank you, it carries. Mr. Resolve, be it resolved to invite Interim Superintendent James Cobb, School Committee Vice Chair Kathleen Ehlers, and Mayor Robert Sullivan to appear before the City Council, sitting as the Finance Committee to discuss the Brockton Public Schools, Brockton High School, and recent issues regarding budget and financials, governance, audit, staffing, and matters related thereto. Referred to finance. Councilor's recognition, Councilor D'Agostino. Um, just a reminder for the accounts committee, we have uh, our next meeting <laughs> set up for uh, Wednesday, December 6th at 6 p.m. Uh, so it's Wednesday, December 6th, 6 p.m. for accounts. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Councilor Thompson. 
Uh, thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, comment on the huge success of this weekend's um, holiday celebration and parade. Uh, it was estimated that 6,000 people uh, came out to Brockton's downtown to celebrate the holidays together. Uh, my family and I, we, we had a really great time. And I, I really want to thank uh, Mary Waldron and the Downtown Business Association, Amanda Glennon, Mayor Sullivan, and the City of Brockton, and this council. Um, for uh, you know, for your sponsorship and your efforts, I'd also like to uh, thank the volunteers, the vendors, the sponsors, and all parade participants uh, for for a job well done. Uh, thank you all, and uh, look forward to next year. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. There's not anything else. We're adjourned.